Um, and uh, that was the first thing I noticed. They asked me to look at it and, uh, and describe to them how I thought the thing functioned. And I asked them, um, you know, how come um, I'm telling you about your engine? And they said that the engine was recovered in a um, project they was working with and they weren't sure how the, everything functioned on it and um, personnel that were available that work on that was not available anymore. And they said it could, if I could just help them out a little bit. Well, being 17 years old at the time, um, they uh, thought I didn't pick up on too many adult innuendos, but I was, I guess I was born old. I knew exactly what they were doing. So I said, fine, you know, yeah, I'd be glad to help my country, you know. So we play along, and I asked them, can I walk up to it? They said, sure, as a matter of fact, you can climb on it if you want. So I got up to the engine, and then, um, Something really unusual about the engine, other than the design, the alloys itself, um, just the sheen and color, looked like um, iridescent color, like um, when you hold a CD disc to the sun and you see the rainbow. Imagine those kind of colors covering this entire engine and glowing like that. It's really pretty. The color of the engine was unlike any metal or alloy I was ever familiar with. and. Um, when I walked to the engine, uh, there was a shadow on the engine. Now, I just told you that the rooms were built where you couldn't have shadows. Uh, when I stuck my arm out to it, there was a shadow on the engine, but right on the table, there was no shadow. So it's not a light casting the shadow on the engine. The engine is picking up radiation off my body. So I back away from it, the shadow dissipates. When I walk back up, it's back on. And so uh, when I put my hands on the engine to pull myself up on it, that's where it's interesting because the alloys in some places were so thin, it was translucent. You could see through it like a, um, like a sheet of amber. Um, so when I laid my hands on it, uh, this really interesting swirl pattern would come off wherever my skin was touching, and they would swirl out through the metal, going out through the, through the alloy. And I, I didn't know of any metal that could do that. So I thought, wow, this thing is heat sensitive. It's picking up my body heat waves like that. Um, so when I crawled, and they were really neat looking, smooth uh, type wave flows uh, coming off my hands. So I pulled myself on up on the engine and started walking over it. And um, it was huge. It was radically different than mine because it was just so much of a different design. And the way they ran the, the fusion flows and, and the way you would run fuel in a fuel line of an engine, this thing was totally different. Uh, there was no wiring. Now, my engine was covered with miles of wiring, so I could get all the firing orders right toward the cyclotrons, the particle accelerators. Did you uh, immediately know that it was alien at that time? I suspected when I put my hands on it, um, it felt so different. It felt like a frog belly. You ever, I don't know if people play frog belly, but I did. Uh, it looked wet, but it wasn't wet. It's just so slick looking, but it wasn't slick. Um, and it was just amazing, but it also had such a texture. And as soon as you touched it, it was cold in the air conditioned well in the facility, but the minute you touched the metal, it became your temperature instantly. I don't know of any alloys that can do that. So I started going, oh, this is not. This may not be from around here. So I'm walking down the engine, and I go up to where the main core cells are in the particle accelerators. There's a hole blown out there, and I step down into it, just get a better look. Now, at this point of view, I'm down in the hole in the engine, and um, uh, the walls are real smooth. They're so smooth, uh, the blast, uh, these temperatures like that engine of mine, they run at 100 million degrees centigrade. And you work with plasma physics. So when the field dropped down, this, uh, this engine's metals were exposed to uh, that kind of temperature, it vaporized. But as soon as it vaporized at that particular point, it fell safe, it shut the engine off. All this probably occurred in a nanosecond, a billionth of a second. So the blast only irradiated out to about four feet in diameter and stopped. Um, what was interesting is the way the engine's metal was whenever there's torn places, you could rub your hands over the torn areas that are jagged, but they wouldn't cut you because they're so smooth. It's more like um, 
flesh being torn rather than metal. Well, when I come up, stood back up on top of the engine, um, I knew, looking at some of the interior uh, parts of it and the way it was constructed, um, I had enough of what was going on. So I turned around and told them um, about this firing system here. And they were going, yeah, w where is the firing system? And I started to tell them that because I've, I finally figured out what this thing was doing. But then I said, well, why am I telling you about your own firing system if all this is yours? And you got, this isn't from here, is it? Matter of fact, it ain't from around the area, is it, boys? And they uh, started getting upset. I said, let's do some assumptions. This is an engine. I'm assuming it came out of a craft, a big one, by the size, proportional differences, probably 300 feet plus, you know, the length of a football field. Well, therefore, it's got occupants. Why in God's name you done with them? Well, that was the wrong thing to say because they are up on the engine coming after me and it's time to leave. Well, when I bend down to get off the engine, I put my hands back on the engine. Something interesting. Instead of the nice smooth wave lines, they would now look like small tornadoes coming off all my fingertips, moving through the metal. And I pulled my hands back, put them back on. There they were, but they were starting to calm down a little bit. And then I realized what this thing was. Uh, they grabbed hold of me, the Air Force guys did. We got back in the golf cart and we were riding back up to the surface. And I'm sitting there thinking, I just realized what this engine is. It's a symbiotic engine. The engine is alive. It is an engine that's capable. The reason they couldn't figure out the firing order is that the tubing that was cascading all over its body looked like the same pattern you would have from a brain stem of a neural synaptic ordering firing order. So what's happening is when the pilots sit down their seats, their thought waves drive the engine. When I first touched the engine, I was curious and awed by it. The wavelengths were smooth off my fingers. When I was getting off down from it, I was totally angry. The engine was not picking up radiation heat waves. It was picking up mental fault energy. That engine is capable of a symbiotic relationship with the pilots. Did you tell them that? I didn't tell them squat. That's why they couldn't figure out the firing order. They said there was no wiring or circuitry. No, the pilot's brains are the wiring and the circuitry. The engine needs them in order to f do all of its functions. In return, the pilots know exactly what the engine feels and how the spacecraft feels. The entire craft is probably symbiotic. Now, before you sit there and blow this off like it's just a bunch of science fiction, let me bring you up to date here to current events. I just left Princeton University. There's a uh, Dr. John up there, Robert John, and he runs the Pear Research Institute. They have a contract from McDonnell Douglas, you ever heard of them, small aerospace company, to build mental shielding for firing systems on the new F-22 fighters. So people go, what's that got to do with thing? Pilot comes home at night, catches his wife in bed with another man. He's having a bad day. He's now got to go fight a fighter that is so sensitive. When he straps on his helmet, just like the uh, Apache helicopter, you turn your head this way, the gun mounts follow your head. This firing system now links to your brain. Foxfire, Clint Eastwood. Where do you think the Hollywood's getting their ideas? McDonnell Douglas is under construction building a symbiotic relationship firing control system.